Mikey. And I'm Sarah. We're here with another Pushy Film review. This time it's the new Kodak Ektachrome E100. So Kodak just re-released this film. It was discontinued about 10 years ago and it was quite popular in its day and it's just been re-released and these are going to be our first two rolls that we're shooting. I'm going to be shooting it in the Canon EOS 3. And I'm going to be shooting in my Minolta X700 as always. So we both shot a fair bit of slide film before. Um, personally I'm a big fan, I love the colours that you get out of slide film and just the tonality has a really unique look. Yeah I definitely agree, like I've shot Velvia and Provia and both times the results have just been incredible in terms of colour and I just love the feeling you get when you look at the slides like mounted on a projector. It's like you know that you took that shot there and then yeah. and you're seeing it. Yeah. So. I was personally very excited about this coming out and I wanted to do a review. I want this to be fairly extensive and informative, but at the same time it's sort of a first look for people who haven't shot it before. Um, if you're not from the generation where this was huge or Kodachrome was huge, um, I'm going to look at it that way. So I put the question out there to some people personally and on Instagram for what they would like to see from this film. Most people said they want to see dynamic range ability because um, from films like Provia and Velvia, they may not have as much dynamic range as this apparently does from what I've seen in beta tests. So really keen to see that. Another big thing was how it performs with portraits and skin tones. As you probably know with Fuji, especially Velvia, it can make skin tones really red or Provia can look a little bit too cold sometimes. So that's gonna, another big thing that we're going to test out with this one. And people also just wanted to see a really varied usage of the film how it performs with street, with um, landscapes, nature, whatever. So I'm gonna try and take quite a few different shots on, on my roll. What do you think you'll take photos of on yours? Yeah, so I'm planning to take hopefully some landscape shots, um, some close up shots, um, some portraits of Hashem, and then tomorrow I'm hanging out with some friends. So hopefully I'll be able to do some street as well. Um, and I'll try and take some footage as well of that so you guys can see like, you know, the conditions and, um, yeah, what I shot. So what we're going to do when we finish these rolls is get them developed and mounted in little slide mounts so that we can project it, see how it performs with that. We're also going to scan them. I'm going to use an Epson V800 to scan some of the, the good shots and maybe even print a photo or two if we yeah. have some good photos on our rolls. Hopefully we do. And then show you guys some of those shots. Now another big thing that I'm hoping to do with this is be able to compare some of the shots side by side with digital. Because the Canon EOS 3 uses the normal Canon EF mount, I'm going to use a Canon digital camera and put some of those shots side by side to see how Ektachrome looks in comparison to a, a regular raw full frame 35mm digital file. So that'll be really interesting to kind of see the dynamic range and colour comparison throughout the, the films. And the lens I'm going to use uh, is probably going to be a lot of this Sigma 50 1.4 because it's versatile and it's a low speed film. And I've also got the Canon 7200 2.8 because it's awesome. So what lenses have you got today? Um, so I'm going to be mainly shooting with the 50 1.4 that I'm borrowing from our friend Brock um, from Work in Process Film Lab. Um, and I've also got the 135 2.8. I'm not sure if I'll use this too much, but I'm going to take it along with me, see um, if I'll be using it. Alright, so what our plan is, we're going to go for a drive, take our cameras and lenses and go out to one of our favourite spots on the Mornington Peninsula here in Melbourne. Hopefully there's going to be a good sunset, really good nature scenes, landscapes, good spots for portraits. Yeah. So we're going to go and get some test shots on this new Ektachrome. So let's load up our cameras and head out. Sounds good.
just got up here in an area called Flinders and we took plenty of shots on the walk up. Uh, I think I've taken about six or seven. Yeah, I've taken about maybe eight or nine so far. So if those have turned out good, I'm sure you would have seen those by now. Yeah. Uh, but we just wanted to show you this amazing view here. It's such a beautiful spot. So we're going to wander around, take advantage of this great light and uh, take some more portraits, some more nature shots. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. You yeah. guys should definitely be all around Melbourne. Definitely come give this place a visit. It's really nice. So many great coastlines here. So um, yeah, I've got the EOS 3 um, shooting some shots on that. I have the digital, which we're filming on now, and I also decided to bring my Pentax 645 because why not? And I have portrait loaded, and I thought this was perfect to shoot some of that. So we might even compare some of those um, to the, the X-Chrome shots. Yeah. Did you, you're shooting a bit of digital today too? Yeah, to so compare? I've also put my, um, my Fuji X-T3 along as well. Just doing a bit of video and also like some stills as well. Um, Fuji creates really nice colors, but of course like today I'm mainly shooting with my Minolta X700. All right, let's go take more photos. Sure. Hey guys, I'm here with Silas. Hey dude. Um, we're shooting a bit of Ektachrome today. We're up on this rooftop and I've got the Canon EOS 3 loaded up with my roll. And what have you got loaded, man? The M6 and the T2. And they're both um, loaded up with Ektachrome? Sure are. Halfway through, ready to go. Nice. So I'm pretty early into my roll, but I'm going to try um, doing some portraits since the weather's a bit crap and it's a bit of a softbox at the moment. So I'll take some shots on the EOS 3 and then I'll take some on the Canon 5D Mark IV with the same lens just for comparison so we can look at how they differ between the digital and the ectochrome shot. Cool, let's do it. Beautiful. home we finished both of our rolls of ectochrome we've had everything developed and mounted on slide mounts so the first thing we did is come home and look at them on the slide projector yeah. and I was pretty impressed what did you think yeah same I was definitely really impressed with the colors of the film um, especially on skin tones I found them like not too saturated like other films like Velvia it was just really nice um, especially I found it worked better in light conditions when it was warmer light not as much like harsh light like middle of the day kind of light it worked really nice when we went for sunset at flinders yeah i had a lot of the same thoughts i thought it was a pretty nice overall film especially the way it looked projected we did later on scan them but let's just talk about the different shots we took so tell us a little bit about the shots you took on your roll yeah so i definitely took like a whole bunch of different shots um, i've gotten some portraits i've gotten some night shots some some in um outdoor environments such as when we went to Flinders for sunset which was really nice uh, the portraits came out really nice so I've got this one of Hashem this was on slightly a, maybe an hour or so before sunset so even then the skin tone came out really nice and then I've got this one as well which is slightly when the Sun was setting so the light was warmer um, and you can see here that his skin looks real, like it's not oversaturated, it's 
you know, not very muted. It's just the perfect balance I found. Um, yeah, it really, this, I, I found this film works really well with warmer lights. And when we put that portrait side by side with a digital, I noticed that the digital did have a lot more saturation and contrast. And because you shot JPEG on the X-T3, yeah. I remember seeing that, that really um, magenta cast over a little bit over the top compared to the ectochrome shot which has a really nice cinematic yeah. sort of look it's softer it's got that that cinema kind of look yeah. to it and then i've got the night shots as well which i found came out really well um i didn't get a chance to take too many night shots but i've got two and both of them i was really impressed with um so i've got this one here which was shot in a neighborhood um just using like long exposure set sort of the camera on a tripod this, uh, this is probably one of my favorite shots, maybe even one of my favorite shots I've ever taken. I love how this film looks, especially for nighttime, it, it came out really well. It does have a really nice look to the highlights. I really agree with them. Um, there's something special about the way it rendered the taillights and the highlights from the car and the glow from the house. And the next shot that you're about to show is probably one of my favorites from your world. Yeah, I love this one as well. Um, especially the light of the bus stop. It came out such a nice blue. Cool, so as discussed in the beginning, I tried to take a variety of different shots. I did a lot of portraits as well. I had some photos of you, one of which being uh, my favorites, which was this print here that I've made. Now keep in mind, these prints have been color corrected a bit. I'm gonna go on to the scans later, which I tried to keep true to the slide, but with the print, I wanted it to look a little bit color balanced. So that's the color corrected version of that. And you can have a look at the digital and you might see that with some of these portraits digitally there was a bit of a green cast especially in the shade there were these two shots that we took in the shade that you can see that even compared to the digital there was a heavier sort of cold feeling to it and i set the camera the digital camera to a daylight balance so there is still a bit more magenta especially with canon colors it has a unique look to the skin tones what i found is that the ectochrome scans looked a little bit more like nikon colors and probably a little bit colder than that and as you saw with my portrait session with Silas, there was also a little bit of a cold cast with that. It was an overcast day, there was that nice softbox effect, but the film did really look quite nice. I, I like those shots, despite that little bit of a green cast to the shadows. Yeah. And it wasn't as prominent when we projected it, but I am noticing that this Ektachrome E100 is a little bit cold, especially in the shade or in the shadows you are going to notice a little bit of that blue-green kind of cast. Depending on, on the light where you live, the, the sun's temperature might vary between different kelvins or light shades. So some of my other favorite shots were some of my street shots. So I actually took a little bit of a walk around the streets, did some shots around the neighborhood. One of the ones I printed was one of my favorites here. Yeah, love that one. Especially the way the shadows look as well. The colors are so nice. Of yeah, the sky. Yeah. yeah, it's got that unique slide look to it. When you shoot slide film, there's a really unique tonality to it. And so far, like the dynamic range, I did find to be quite good. And this is another one of my favorites, just a simple shot of the door handle in golden light. And that's, I don't know why, it's just one of my favorites. It has a really retro look, reminds me of Soul Lighter stuff and kind of that, not quite Kodachrome, but it does have nice yellows, I found that the yeah. skin tones, yellows and oranges do work quite nicely on this film. And I also have some nature shots, so one of my favorites from our trip to Flinders uh, was this shot of the three paragliders or... Yeah. or Parachuters? Yeah. yeah. The dudes with the parachutes <laughs> um, walking past on the hill. Just a simple shot, but it really accentuates the bold, perfectly balanced colors of ectochrome and the really fine detail, fine grained um, look that you get from this film. It's quite nice. It does remind me a lot of Provia but it has its own little unique look to all the colors. So the blues and greens and, and yellows and oranges, everything yeah. looks that little bit different. But look at the sky, it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's actually with no ND filters and nothing on the front of the lens. So that's another favorite there. And this is the corrected version of one of those portraits I took of Sarah. So as you can see in the digital version right now, it does have a bit of a cold look to it. So did the digital, but then the good thing is when you're scanning them, if you want, you can just correct that. So if you're shooting this film with the intention of scanning it, you can just correct the, the cold look that you might get in the shade or in the shadows of your film. So that way you can print it out just the way you want it. 
Yeah, just elaborating on the color cast that you were mentioning before. I definitely agree. I found that especially in some of the portraits when it was a bit overcast um, and this portrait of Jared that I took, I it was quite evident as well. Not, not heaps, but just a little bit and I had to color correct it. But other than that, like it came out really well. Definitely. So one of my suggestions is that if you're planning to project this film, because on the projector, I think there's a natural warmth that comes through the globe. And the thing about slide film is it was probably designed to be projected. The way it looks best is still probably on the projector. Mm. And if you're going to shoot it with the intention to project, I would probably suggest using a skylight filter, which is a subtle sort of a warming filter. You can't really see it too well, but if I hold it against a white piece of paper, you can see that a skylight filter has a little bit of a, a warm magenta cast to it. So that's really good to counteract those cold tones that you might get from this kind of film. All right, so let's talk a little bit about dynamic range. This is one of the questions a lot of people asked me about and wanted me to test out. So if I'm gonna be honest with you, the dynamic range of this film is not too much better than what I've already seen with Fuji Chrome slides. I do think it is a little bit better. The way it handles highlights when it starts approaching clipping the highlights, it's not quite as bad. So it doesn't clip the highlights quite as easily in my experience. It does have really good shadow detail for a slide film and good highlight detail. Uh, maybe one of these shots I took on the rooftop can sort of demonstrate that, that yeah. I took of Silas sitting um, on the ledge there. You can actually see that where the sun is sitting behind the clouds, it's still really detailed. There's a lot of fine detail in these clouds here and even enough detail in the shadows. But again, it's not gonna be as much as digital. We went into this knowing it's not gonna be as much as digital, but I do think it has a nicer transition from shadows to highlights than something like Provia and especially something like Velvia, which can look really harsh. Mm. So there was also the macro shot here that I took of the flower. This is probably um, just a nice demonstration of the fine detail of the shot and the, the fact that there's enough dynamic range. Mm. Yeah, it has kind of like a classic magazine look to it. Yeah. That's the thing about slides. That's yeah. probably what they used to, to print all those photos in the old magazines and National Geographics. And a lot of the shots I've found have had that really interesting tonality to it. But again, the dynamic range is quite good. It might be just that little bit better than Provia. I do like the way it handles highlights. And you can see in this shot here, it's got a pretty good dynamic range all the way from the shadows behind the tram into the, the shiny part of the building up here in the sky. So although I'm not sure if there's anything displayed on the, this, the front of the tram there, I actually don't think there no, was. No, I don't think there was. If you can look at that and call it a blown highlight, Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't look blown in the way that I've noticed from all the Provia I've shot, especially in New Zealand. Yeah. It has a pretty nice postcard look to it, as with a lot of these shots here. For example, the shot um, into the window. And I have a shot that I just took on the street with really heavy contrast. I did this intentionally and I made it for the highlights because that's ideally what you want to do with slide film. And you can see here that on this wall, there's still enough detail to see the wall and looking into these deepest, darkest shadows are probably at least six stops difference. There is a bit of detail. It's not all of it. You can't see into the blacks, but there's enough detail in the shadows to make out the woman sitting on the chair and these chairs here in the foreground. So again, a bit of that, that cold cast in the shadows, mm. but I do think this film does have very decent dynamic range compared yeah. to something like Velvia. Yeah, with um, exposing for the highlights, it's good that you did that because I found that when I was shooting some portraits of my friend Mario, um, it, it, yeah, it didn't handle the overexposure very well, which slide film generally doesn't. Um, that's my mistake. I should have exposed for the highlights. Yeah, but I did find that the shadows came out quite nice. Very lot, lot of detail. Um, it's just exposure. And again, even in the areas where it has sort of started clipping the highlights, it doesn't look too harsh. Like it's still a usable shot. You could have gone about half a stop under, yeah. but it doesn't ruin the shot. It's kind of like digital in the sense that highlights can blow out easily. But then, you know, by the time you expose for the highlights, you wouldn't get too much detail in the shadows. But I do still like the way the film looks. Yeah. It's not too saturated. And again, that was also warm light as well around like a yep. bit before sunset. So even though the highlights are blown, it's still handled the colors nicely yeah, yeah i definitely like the way the colors look in warm light yeah and talking about portraits another thing i think this film has over provia is probably a slightly better handling of skin tones there's maybe something about ectochrome i don't, don't really know how to describe it because a lot of the, the shots we took were in varied conditions but overall skin tones never really went too red or yeah. too cold or anything so i think warm colors your oranges and and yellows and reds actually handle quite well. They don't oversaturate. 
And even, yeah. even on Provia, I've noticed oversaturation of colors sometimes, and definitely on Velvia. But this film actually has a pretty low contrast compared to other slides and a nice handling of warm colors and skin tones. Yeah. Now it's worth keeping in mind that I scan these just on Epson V800. It's not the best way to get all the detail out of a slide. You probably want to do something like a flex type scan or even do a macro scan with a digital camera. I didn't do that for these because I just wanted to show you guys some of the, the basic qualities of the film, but I'm sure that if I did a macro scan on the 5D and really brought out every single bit of detail, it would give you like a lot more out of your, your film if you're going to print it big, for example. Um, we might maybe do that with some of these later, but you can really see with this shot here from your roll on the, in the car park, there's so much detail. It's really sharp, especially if you use a good lens. This is an old uh, lens that you're using here, keep in mind, and you still get plenty of detail. Look at the sharpness on the sign and yeah. the, the performance in the sky. Nothing's blown out. There's still detail in the shadows. Colors aren't oversaturated, so if you want to use this film for for fine art stuff or for big prints, it is going to give you probably one of the, the best results for a slide film. And otherwise, maybe something like Kodak Ektar is still one of my favorites. Yeah. All right, guys, so to sum everything up, we're pretty impressed with this film. And dynamic range is pretty good. It didn't blow me away. It's still a slide film. It's not going to be, you know, this is digital. Work better than other slide films. It did work better yeah. than other slide films, I think, especially in the highlights. Not as good as negative film or something like Portra. Um, I love the night shots, some of your, your long exposures there. There's something special about how the fluorescent light looks. It doesn't have that weird, gross green color that you get when you shoot on negative films or on digital even. And the, the tail lights and warm highlights have a really surreal look and I really love that. But you just have to keep in mind to allow extra time for reciprocity which means you kind of overexpose longer than your meter is telling you to when you're doing exposures longer than one second yeah i definitely agree the night shots were again like my favorites probably out of the whole roll it works really well with portraits um really well in also a warmer light and yeah really i'd rate it like nine out of ten <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's a good daily shooting slide isn't it it's yeah. general purpose it doesn't oversaturate it has good dynamic range performance for a slide film and the cost is about, in it's Australian $20 roughly, which mm. is, I think it's about 12 US dollars for yeah. all you guys overseas. But slide film does cost more than negative film. Yeah, it's just it how does. it is. Shop yeah. for a deal. Um, buy it in bulk if you can. And, you know, try and use it to its best performance for fine prints and, and mm. projecting. I think that's going to be the best use for this film. Yeah. Were there any negatives other than what we've already mentioned that you think about this slide film? Honestly, no, probably just that bit of the cold blue and green cast yeah. I got some of the shots easily corrected or use that skylight filter I mentioned. So what I'm going to do is probably give thanks to Silas who allowed me to take some portraits. I'm going to put a link to his Instagram. Maybe he'll put up some of his ectochrome shots that he shot on the M6 and contacts. And you had some shots of yeah, your friends um, and Jared. Yeah, so Jared, thank you. We met him at Milk Boy Espresso. I don't think he's there anymore, but yeah, thank you, Jared, for letting us take some shots of you. Also, Mario as well, thank you. And who else? Did I take any? And you, thank you. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thanks to anyone else who we didn't mention, all the, the random street shots and photos of friends. Um, and thank you guys for watching this review. We'll see you on the next episode of Pushing Film. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>